Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Demi Stevens from Hay 19 right here in Torrance cooking up another fun menu. It's kale, Brussels sprouts, and a whole lot of goodness with a twist. And it's mocktails from the Hay 19 menu you won't want to miss. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in your own community. So grab a seat, get comfortable. We've got another great menu for you. This is your Community Cooking. Welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Kirk Lines. In our kitchen today is a familiar face, Demi Stevens. Hi. How you doing, Demi? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. Now, you are like the the restaurateur maven of Torrance, I think, right? What we, how many? Well, South, oh, well, I'm going to take those. You're going to go South Bay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm kidding. We'll get caught around that right underneath. <laughs> so, well, how many do we have now? Is it two? We have two. Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay, mm -hmm. right, because we've got so the Ortega 120, Hay 19, and the nine and a half coffee room. And all of them still doing as wonderful as always. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've I've been to all three and um and I love them. Yeah. And that's you. why we keep having you back. Thank you. <laughs> and today yeah. we actually are going to steal a little bit from the Hay 19 menu. We right? are. All right. So we have. Okay, if, right, let's start here. If if you ever go to Hay 19, you will notice that everything on the menu has a bizarre name. Correct. This may be one of the most bizarre. Yes. No. And this one's about as straightforward as you can get. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's it's literally called "Everything's Healthy, but Let Us Ruin That for You." Right. You you're, you're just mm -hmm. you're very verbose. Right. <laughs> um, uh -huh. And I guess that's because we've the healthy part. I'm I think I'm looking at. Yes. Okay. Healthy is your vegetables. Right. We've got some kale here. Mm -hmm. It looks like. Shaved uh, Brussels. Brussels sprouts. Sage. And then we've got a big old thing of oil. Correct. That's where you're going to ruin this. Mm -hmm. Well, ruin this. Right. Because we're frying this. We're going to be turning these into chips, I guess. Pretty much a little snackety snack. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. And it, to go with that snack, you are making two mocktails. I am. That are from the drink menu. Right. We, we go with all fresh ingredients, so they change often. Okay. Um, but uh, we've gotten a little bit more into mocktails because I'm manufacturing my cocktail mixes, actually in Louisiana, but um, those are virgin as well. Oh, okay. And right. so um, we can add alcohol to all of this stuff, which I strongly <laughs> encourage. <laughs> But, we'll um, allow you to make suggestions on right, those. On those uh, right, but um, you can also drink it while you're pregnant or while you're five. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> so. perfect. So they're delicious on their own. Right. Exactly. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So like we said, we've got we've got kale here in Brussels sprouts now. Um, and sage. And sage. sage is my addiction. Uh, right. A really underused mm -hmm. herb, mm -hmm. especially it only kind of comes out around Thanksgiving time. But wrongly. It, right. And then it, and then it's it goes. It's cheated. Kale it, just kind of took over. And then Kale's like that really horrible football player, and this is the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> so quarterback, kicker, really underrated. Now, now I mean, uh, could these greens and, and the Brussels sprouts be substituted with anything else? or? Yes. I wouldn't do it with, okay, no lettuce, no, no spinach, Too, right. nothing weak and wilty. Things that have lots of um, Body veins them. Uh, in them, you know, right. stems, lots of heavy stems. Right. Uh, uh, Collards, um, I'm big on collards, uh, any of the chards, the Swiss chards, chards right. you know, uh, any of those items. Um, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower you can throw yes. into this as well. Yes. Um, so it's more just what you're digging, and then you can call your mom and say, I ate my vegetables. That's right. Or, or what you have, or what you have, because let's, you know, the thing is, why, especially with the, 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 the leafy greens part, or, you know, you might start to go a little bit south, not in a going bad way, but, you know, they may be a little bit yellow or what. Perfect opportunity Perfect time to, to fix deep that. fry that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. then use it up. Mm -hmm. And you're also, there's, there are different theories on all of this, but there's the idea that if you steam or boil, your vegetables that you're losing a little bit in the way right, of vitamins. It's reaching out as opposed to we're sort just, of being locked in. We're locking it in. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to roll with that story. And That's my story. I'm sticking to and, it. And, you know, <laughs> listen, I mean, you know, the, the kale in the market is relatively inexpensive. So it's, it's something. It's inexpensive now inside of grocery stores. The price of it 
for restaurants? Went up. Well, it go. It went up from where it's it was. Nouveau, it's mm -hmm. the thing. Everybody's yeah. right. Well, you know, in 2008, when when I opened Ortega 120, ground beef was really inexpensive. But then the economy crashed, right? right. So the price of the ground beef went up, and the price of the steak came down. Because this people is a high end steak, and right. people were buying ground beef. Right. Again. So it's, it's in supply. high demand. So it's more expensive than it used to be. So it's cauliflower. It's a catch twenty two. Right. <laughs> eat healthy. We're going to take your money. <laughs> right. 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 Don't eat healthy. We're still going to take your money. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, it's it's uh, it, it's like I said, relatively inexpensive for people to do this at home. Right. A lot less expensive than going and actually buying kale chips. Correct. Which are it's an expensive product. Yeah. I don't care where you go. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's been packaged and it's been sitting around, so it's not. Be nearly as nutritiously dense that it as, also as this loses a lot of crispiness, even and you know, they'll put the silica packs or the cellulose right, packs in, but it doesn't really seem to help that much. I like this dish because I eat it warm, it's a little bit more like a popcorn kind of thing. I'm pretty sure I annoy the chefs in my kitchens because <laughs> I'm that person who's standing there eating their garnishes. Right, know? right, right. Kind of right. like that horrible cocktail waitress. I was her too. I, I ate from the buffet. I've got three kids who would do the same thing to me at yeah, home. I can't keep like bacon like yeah, laying around. You can't. No. Yeah. No olives, no cherries, things and, like that. And speaking of kids, if, if, if the kids were on the fence, which mine aren't when it comes to, I'm lucky, they, they eat both of these. Uh, but but if a kid was on the fence, this is not a bad way to get a vegetable. You can try it. and bribe that one in there. Um, I my 14 year old still isn't gonna, really. Uh, yeah, still no. not going to do it as a chip, huh? No, no. His statement is that hockey requires pizza and um, <laughs> chicken. He'll do you know he he'll do chicken Caesar salad. He does have a point there. Mm -hmm. He needs carbs. He does. <laughs> All he right. Does. Well, let's let's get started here. Okay. So we've just got. I mean, I guess a very it's loose very simple. Right. So we've got just some some chopped up kale. And I, I do notice that you've taken. The bigger woody stems. Yeah, we do have some of the smaller stems, mm -hmm. but but the bigger woody ones, they're gone. Right. And then here, these look like they've been cut on a mandolin. They're sh yeah, they're shaved. Okay, they're mm -hmm. shaved now. Mm -hmm. And they come like that too. You can buy them in the store now. Like you know, any grocery store has them shaved now. And 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 probably a good thing for the average home cook who right. a either doesn't have a mandolin or will lose their finger. Oh on it. my goodness! Mm -hmm. Don't even talk to me about that. I've mm -hmm. told these stories before. Yeah, yeah, that's happened to me not once but twice. There you go. Same thing. Right. Um, yeah, <laughs> and, and especially with something like a, uh, a a Brussels sprout that is just you are like literally it's, it's, shaved. And you'll hit a spot on these too. So yeah, you so know. you really got to know what you're doing and using that mandolin a mm -hmm. lot. So but you like and you said, can do broccoli too. You know. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that stuff comes shaved as well. Mm -hmm. That comes shaved as well. Okay, so run us through. What are we gonna do? We're good. <laughs> Drop it in a fryer. <laughs> <laughs> it's so simple. If you can't do this one at home, just call me. Well, let's let's start here. Wh mm -hmm. What oil are you using? This is a uh, this is a canola blend. Okay. Uh, but anything vegetably, peanut well, oil. Well, you don't want to do an olive oil. No. You don't want to do a coconut oil. No. You know, you have to kind of, and a lot of people seem to be making that coconut oil mistake lately because your burn, burn point is different. And yes. so people aren't looking at so that. So what she's referring to is the smoke threshold on both olive oil and, and coconut oil and other oils, mm -hmm. sesame oil, mm -hmm. is is very low. So what happens is, is that the, it smokes earlier and when it's smoking, it's burning. And burning. when it's burning, it's getting very mm -hmm. acrid and just not not pleasant tasting right. at all. And and then are we trying to go for a temperature? Um, I like around the 375 mark, okay. but that's I don't like to say so much on temp exactly because your temperatures are going to be different on your stove. So if you're looking at on your oven stove mark where it says 375, you're going to actually want to check your temp. Oh yes. You know what I mean? So yeah, you don't want to go know with when what's it on comes here. to 375 right. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Either a deep fry, f fry thermometer, or mm -hmm. um, if you want to get real fancy, you can get one of those infrareds. And yeah, fancy schmancy. I like those. Yeah, it's kind of like getting your ear temperature. Um, I'm looking for the swirl. Right. It, it gets a bit of like a sheen or an iridescence mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. And when you start to see that, that's when you know you're ready. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And some people will do this little trick. Do a little bit of salt. You do that, and you can see what it's going to do. So. Do we have any bubbling going nope. on here? Nope. Mm -mm. No. So we need to. We need to kind of turn that bad boy back up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so with these, though, what we're talking about the um, the stems, you don't. This is sage. Um, like I said, completely underrated. But you're just going to pop these ends off real yeah. quick if you want to help out with that. That of would course, be awesome. Of course. And you know, are, how good are deep fried herbs? I mean, like deep fried parsley Love. or fried. Uh, I should say not deep fried, but flash fried. Mm -hmm. uh, basil, mm -hmm. um, it, it sage. It, it all really works as like a wonderful edible garnish. Well, just this. I mean, I. W 
And there used to be a chef on a TV show when I was a kid yeah. named Chef Tell, and he'd say, oh, I, I, wish you could I wish you could smell the smell vision That uh, was him. I remember Chef Tell. Yeah. So <clears> I, <throat> I am just addicted to sage. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. Like I said, it, it goes away. It's like something that I think most people like, uh, you know, associate with the winter months, but there's no reason that you can't incorporate this in, you know, myriad of, of, of summertime dishes. Mm-hmm. Or in cocktails, which we're going to do in the mocktail. This thing. is true. That's mm -hmm. like that's you know that's I, it's so fun that 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 we've gone that direction now with cocktails, where we're using a lot of like savory mm -hmm. ingredients or ingredients that we know to be savory, mm -hmm. and putting them into a sweeter cocktail, and mm -hmm. it really working. Rosemary, thyme, sage. Yeah. I did a um, chips and salsa um, martini about nine oh. years ago, and um, and I put cilantro in the in the cocktail as the garnish, etc. And I had an onion salt rim. I did a ceviche martini. Oh, look at you. Delicious. Did you use ceviche? All right. Let's get cooking. So we should probably mention, though, when this stuff goes in, it gonna be, could be a lot of water splatter, It's going to pop or up. Or a lot of oil splatter, I mm -hmm. see, because of the water content. Right. So do you have a little trick for keeping it? I that? do. I'm going to put, I'm going to two-hand this. Okay. So if you're going to do it at home and you're not going to do it in one of these, you're just going to do it in a regular Pot. skillet. Right. You're just going to drop that thing right over the top of it, you know, right. like a two-inch skillet. Yes. Okay. Um, so you're going to do that, but either way, you're going to have pop up on it, um, and you can do um, you can do a, a secondary trick if you're going to do it at home to keep that down is you're going to put just a little bit of oil in the bottom, and then you're going to um, pour your oil over the top with your salt and your spices on it if you want to change that up a little okay. bit so that you're in a frying pan instead of in one of these things. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So if you are deep frying, just have a lid. At the right ready. there, or you're going to clean for a week. Oh man, <laughs> it, it, and that is not fun because you're talking about the crevices of your stove and your oven, and mm -hmm. and it's just got oil and your the longer dog's it sits collar. There, the harder it gets to. Yeah. to oh. I'm going to do a little tester on that and see if we're good. Hey. Oh, I'm good. Okay. See, it's starting to bubble. Yeah. There you go. Just dragging a second on that. This has a lot of water in it, so it's going to. It's going to come up on you. Do you do them all at the same time, or do you do them yeah, separate? Everything's at the same time. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's easy peasy. And this is just squeezy. This is an appetizer at the at the restaurant, correct? First it's you know more late kind of night fingery. menu, bar top kind of thing. Right. You know. Because this is eaten with the hands, just like popcorn, and, and right. Sounds delicious. I'm going to put everything into one so that I can have this all happen at once. Right. And then what 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 will happen in my experience is you'll you'll hear it bubbling and that 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 water escaping from from the vegetable, and when it subsides you can take the lid off at that point exactly. and then you're good. Mm -hmm. then and you're, you're pretty good. much done. Okay, but here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's the sound. Can you hear it? I can hear it. I can see it. I can hear it. Now, the kicker on this stuff, too, is not to put the lid all the way over it. You're going to have to leave some of it out so it can vent. Otherwise, it just gets super soggy. Oh, okay. Good, mm -hmm. good to know. It's like when you put something in a to-go box. You know, I yeah. never put lettuce in the to-go boxes because yeah. it'll sweat out. Same kind of idea. Before the show, we were talking, and, and I, I want to tell the audience a little bit about, you know, the, fried kale. It's such a great technique that can be used in, in a lot of ways. And when I was in Italy, I had just a, a beautiful dish that is so good, and it's Basically, any dried string-like pasta, like a spaghetti or a linguine, make it with an aglio olio, so olive oil, garlic, a little bit of anchovy or anchovy paste, some crushed red peppers, some parsley. That's your pasta. That's your sauce. And then you fry kale like this. And when you serve it, that mound of kale comes on top of the pasta, like a big mound. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano. And when you eat that together, that textural contrast of that, that, that soft, chewy pasta with the crunchy kale is absolutely dynamite. Fantastic. Okay. Well, it looks like we've got probably another minute or so on this. Mm -hmm. Tell you what, why don't we finish that up over break, and then okay. when we come back, we can have this all cleaned up and make some mocktails? Perfect. Sounds Works good. Works for me. All right, don't go away. We will be right back. Phone Rob.
welcome back to Community Cooking. I am your host, Kirk Lyons, and with me is Demi Stevens from Hey 19 and Ortega 120. And here we go. We have our, our, our kale, our sprouts, and our sage has been fried. We drained it off, and now we just need to dress them. Exactly, and it's super easy. You can add other items to this. You can add the cauliflower. You can add arugula. You can add all kinds of different things, but in the end of it, all you really need is this is a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. Don't overdo right, said lemon juice. Otherwise, you ruin that good fry that right. you put on it. You put your salt in there. Definitely. And this is, you don't have to do red oh, peppers, I'm but I do. You could probably even do a little Parmesan. You can. Oh. I'm going vegan on this one, but yeah. Um, listen to that, how nice and crunchy they are. What a lovely snack, right? It's super fun, I mean, super easy. And I could eat this all day long. Yeah, yeah, and that, it goes down pretty easy. And it's like six ninety nine if you buy it at the grocery store or at you know whole wallet. You could end up nine ninety nine. <laughs> but this would that run us a buck fifty? Right. Yeah, we're, we're talking yeah. like a dollar something yeah. exactly. All right. Well, we'll put that aside. I'm going to taste that later. But now we're going to get started on our mocktail. So what's up first? We're going to do the palm ginger first. Palm ginger. I'm taking that's, uh, that's pomegranate. Pomegranate, ginger, right. Lovely. Which is that funny little thing about pomegranate is actually cherry coke is not cherry coke. It's pomegranate because grenadine is Spanish for pomegranate. Right. Yeah. Yes. Very fancy on that one. So we're going to put that one in here. Okay. Um, I'm going to use mixers. All right. And this is the mixologist in you now. I'm, I'm, very, I'm excited about this because we've never done drinks yeah. together. I when personally never use um, plastic mixing glasses so and I that would be because the because I, I look for the weight oh, yeah. I thought maybe because the plastic might absorb some flavors or soap taste or I don't know it might know. but I never use them I didn't tell my staff not to do that today I just said send me with the mixers <laughs> um, but yeah it's and then they get all scratched up too right. so um, the uh, ice okay uh, ice. I think it's in the freezer. Oh, actually. okay. That would be a good, on that one, we need a good place ice. to put ice. Mm -hmm. uh, here we go. Perfect. Just how many do you need? Just a few is fine. We okay. can we can we can fake it till we make it. We're already mocktailing. Okay. Yeah. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, so this one's super easy. We are going to use. This is um, the number 19 mix. It's also very similar to the Ortega 120 margarita mix. So it's an orange, lemon, lime, agave, nectar, and water. Really okay. simple. Is it sweetened at all with uh, like simple syrup, like sugar or agave anything? Agave nectar. Oh, the agave. That, sorry, I missed that part. Yeah, yeah no you're worries. Right. All right. Yeah. So we're just going to go in on this. Do you like the agave as opposed to simple syrup? Significantly better. Really? Yeah, Talk because it has that. a lower glycemic index. Okay. And it is going to, and this is as if you would do it at your house, because I'm clearly going to use different ice, and the size does matter. Right. Ice. Um, it has a lower glycemic index, so you don't get that. Okay. That you would get on a simple syrup, especially when you're adding alcohol into it, because then that stuff um, adds uh, sugar height. Gotcha. So that, that that would be the that, that would be the that too sweet kind of sticky thing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, is that what happens when you get a sugar rush? Or what no, do you, just that, that, that just, taste. It's just cloyingly mm -hmm. sweet sort right. of thing. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And then this is a uh, ginger um, elixir, so to speak. All right. Um, one of my friends from Venice. I, I don't know if I'm from Venice originally, but um, one of my buddies uh, started this company. And he's now nationwide. And he owns a. Uh, a ginger farm in Hawaii, go figure. Nice. And so he makes sort of a, if, if, if we don't have access to this elixir, what, what can we use instead of? You could use a ginger beer. Ginger beer, okay. Close enough, you know, yeah. the, the virgin type, like the and root ginger beer. beer is not like not alcoholic beer. beer. Mm -hmm. It's just a, uh, it's much stronger, more gingery than, than ginger ale per se. Exactly, exactly. And then this is the pomegranate syrup or grenadine, etc. cetera. Um, you just and don't want to do. And um, that you could buy. At, at Anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And actually, I'm finding it um, oddly um, often at any of those discount uh, stores. Okay. You know. My running joke with this is this is habit. You don't need to do that. There's no reason the for it. The pinky out? The pinky out has no reason. And I don't believe in this. I've heard, yes, I w I've heard that you're supposed to go lateral or, or, or horizontal with it, but no? I don't agree with that. You know, okay. I think it depends on the ice. 
but um, coming up in here for me, I get my hair stuck in it, or I ha I'm trying <laughs> to listen, right? right? Or I'm trying to listen uh, to a customer. Right. So that's practical if you're a mixologist who's standing back, not talking to people. Right. I'm talking to you, right. you know, because I'm actually a bartender a who bartender. makes really good drinks. Right. Got you. You know. Okay. okay. Fair enough. So super easy. This is the easiest easiest mocktail ever. I do have a pomegranate ginger margarita at Ortega 120 and we have other pomegranate ginger so cocktails. So maybe tequila at with this would be lovely. Tequila, vodka, don't go with the gin. Right. Uh, you know, uh, tequila, vodka, you're going to be okay. Uh, you can actually, it does work with bourbons and or whiskeys. You just kind of yeah. need to modify that ginger a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's super simple, and really easy. I think easy. also too, it might, and, and it, how about mezcal? Mezcal would probably be nice with it or a little too yeah, smoky? The mezcal will kind of, the ginger and the mezcal are going to fight, fight with each other. There you go. That's right. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but you're right. Ah, it's a beautiful color, too. Yeah, isn't that pretty? Like ruby red grapefruit juice. Exactly. Now, we don't have enough ice for me to pull it all the way to the top, but I can hit it with that 7-Up right there. Okay. That's just soda? Lemon lime soda? It's, it's actually soda water, but okay. I'm kind of fine with actually, that, too. I prefer that anyway. Mm -hmm. So we're going to cut that edge on it, and you should be good to go. And all you're going to do on a perfect cocktail is there's a formula for it. Uh, three parts alcohol, two parts something sweet, one part something sour, 0.5 is water melted ice. Wow. Is. Okay. Uh, I'm not great at math, but <laughs> I, I, go to I math can eyeball. Yeah. I got, okay, what's our second drink? I'm going to taste this after the break mm -hmm. when I have my... This is my, not my actually my, my recipe. This is somebody else's recipe. Okay. Um, she uh, works with me, and she's lovely. So um, I'm super happy to have somebody on my staff that I can go here, make a drink instead nice. of it me being right, me. Right, right, right. Because I travel a lot right now making drinks. So this is a smash, and I'm actually going to... pull. I'll do it in this. I normally do them in these. Can I have the muddler? Absolutely. There's your muddler. And then I need the sage and the berries. And these are blackberries? Mm-hmm. Oh, love sage and blackberry. Nice, nice yep. combination right there. And grapefruit juice. And then we're going to add a little bit of that into it as well. Okay. But when you're muddling, this is how I know if you lied on your resume. Okay. People will often go right to this square spot right. and muddle from this side. Mm, right. Now I know you lied, right? So it's this side. Right. Again, it's that whole amazingness of people telling you that they've been bartending for 20 years and they don't know how to make a margarita. Right, right. And the bottom line is, is that that, that smaller, thinner side fits better into the bottom of the glass. And it's a flat. And um, it's a flat, right. Mm -hmm. It's a flat base. So. Oh, I like, I like this. I, and, you know, and muddlers, you can pick those up at any. Anywhere. Any, yeah, bar mm -hmm. supply store. You know well, in any of those home type stores. Yeah, and yeah you're right. Mm -hmm. They'll always have like a, like a, a bar section. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you're going to turn, you don't do, don't do this. It's a turning it's motion. It's a turning motion. Okay. And we're sort of, we're, we're sort of you're grinding gonna, it all together. You're going to beat it up. Okay. You know. And um, I'm always telling people, beat the heck out of that drink. Um, and you can do that sometimes with just inside of the shaker. Okay. And, you know, clarifying on that, you know, where you're shaking, how high you're shaking. And the, I think that really just, it really boils down to individual and how that okay. person's shaking. And In the terms ice, of the taste of the drink, it doesn't make much difference? It makes a difference when you have the, the size of the ice or what kind of ice you're using. The theory that I've been told <coughs> in terms of martinis. Mm -hmm. um, is That's a different story. Okay, because what I've been told is that, th that when you shake horizontally like this, that more it shakes of the ice. And, and it more of the surface area of the ice covers the, the, the right. liquid as opposed to just going like this. Exactly. Right. So but I'm trying to break stuff up on this. <coughs> okay. So you're, they're kind of taking that, I think, to a little bit of an extreme. There's right. a little bit of a show involved in that, right. you yes. know. And it is a show. I'll give you right. that. Yeah, because there is, I mean, especially with like a, any drink, like you said, there, there is a element, the water content's important. It's mm -hmm. a part of the drink. Exactly. And to, you have to get that right or it will be off. Exactly. And it's harder. That's right. I, Ice is important as well. Mm -hmm. In my world, uh, because my, I mean, my first job in restaurants was in kitchens. I'll give you that. But I'm known for my cocktails. And so, actually, that margarita has right now more awards than any other margarita in the country. I know go this. Figure. I know. Do you want uh, yes, the please. Bus? There you go. You, I was going to throw in a mason, but these, these are fine. Um, I forgot what I was trying to tell you about that. Uh, Your award-winning uh, 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 margarita has won more awards. No, uh, yeah. Are we past that? Yeah, <laughs> okay. that was just an... Um, that looks delicious. Oh, the, the where you're going to make the mistakes. So when you're making um, a soup, you can add more into that and make that pot bigger. Right. When you're making a cocktail, you got this much room. You got and if you make a mistake and just 
this much of a mistake, you have thrown the whole thing off. You literally got one shot. You have one shot. Yeah, okay. literally and figuratively. Well, it looks like we're good to go here, right? You are. Tell you what. Why There's a little garnet on this. All right. Um, here, you're going to want a, a wedge of lime. I don't have one with me. Um, and then this is going to be the... Um, the bear. Beautiful. Beauty. All right. Well, I tell you what, why don't we take a break, get cleaned up, come back, have some snacks, have some drinks. Perfect. Sound good? Yeah, right. and there's no straw in there either. You saw that. Yes. We'll talk about that yeah. on the other side. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't go away. We'll be right back. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes, and you come to mine. This is it. First impression. My way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Welcome back to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Kirk Lines. I'm with Demi Stevens from Hey19 and Ortega 120. And we have made what looks like a really, really delicious snack that I can't wait to get into. My mouth is watering. And two beautiful drinks. Or mocktails. 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 And this one you can do, um, again, just about any um, alcohol except gin. Okay. Real quick, before we went to break, you made mention about no straws. Why no straws? Um, in the last 10 years, we have produced 550 billion tons of straws sitting in the Pacific Ocean. So there you go. Right, and corn oil straws are not the answer because corn oil, once it touches salt water, behaves like petroleum. Okay. So they don't break down in the ocean. And they break down what? in and fresh water, but not I, in. I really don't want one in my drink anyway. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's I really just been a last 10 years thing. It's not something that we've always done. It's new. Yeah. We never used to put it in water glasses, and now we do. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no bueno. Yeah. Okay. Uh, may I? Absolutely. All right. Here we go. And they are. I love that I can that tell stuff. they're crispy. Mm -hmm. You can hear they're crispy. Mm. Oh, my goodness. You know, that lemon is everything. Mm -hmm. That and the chili flake, that lemon and, and, and you know, <clears throat> perfect with the salt and the lemon and the chili flake. That's it's it, so it, simple. I mean, it makes it come to life. It is delicious. That bowl's not big enough for me. I know. Yeah. I can eat that in five minutes. Oh, quite that. Yeah. yeah. But All that right. replaces popcorn. Here we go. Palm ginger. Palm ginger. Oh, yeah. Easy yeah, really nice, really mm -hmm. clean tasting. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. can imagine that with it, with a vodka or a, t a tequila, a tequila. That especially would mix, tequilas. Mix nicely, mm -hmm. yeah, so good. You oh. want it? Don't go any darker than a reposado though on that. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. There, you can go as dark as you want. You can do a lot of whiskeys inside of that one, bourbons, oh, also the refreshing. heavier tequilas, the uh, añejos, extra añejos. And that sage, Rum. just that you muddled it, mm -hmm. really, really comes through, and it's such a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. What a nice combination. Yeah. That would actually, a cocktail that would pair really nicely with a dinner. Yeah. You know, very good. Mm -hmm. Wow. Demi, Boy thank snacks. you. Yes, that's my <laughs> snack, though. Th and I'm going to go back and thank yeah. you so much. Oh, thanks for having me it's again. It's always I appreciate nice it. having you. I'm sure you're going to be back, but uh, it just goes to show you we really are cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. On behalf of myself, the crew, Demi, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Community Cooking. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200, in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget, you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.